Hello all, in this video we are going to talk about more advanced operations using uh, arrays and matrices and NumPy and we're going to do linear algebra so not only we need to insert NumPy from NumPy we also need to import this sub module called the linear algebra and we rename it as LA so let me show you some of the uh, more advanced things we can do with matrices and with uh, vectors. So here I have created a two by three matrix, call it matrix one, a two by two matrix two, and another two by two called matrix three. And also two uh, basically one by three vectors called uh, array one and array two. And uh, then here I have some other thing called vector test, which is a um, one by four uh, vector, but I have added two uh, extra dimensions of one here. So although this is a 1D matrix, I uh, converted it into a 3D by adding these two extra brackets. So it looks like this guy is basically a one by one by four. Okay, so it has some extra dimensions that I'm going to get rid of and I'll show you how to do that. And this is common in some applications that the results is, although it should be just a one by four, it has an extra dimension of one. So it's like one by one by four. How would you get rid of that extra one? I'll show you. So the first thing is, other than defining the uh, matrices directly by typing the numbers, there are some special matrices that we know in linear algebra, and we can create them just by passing a few info. For example, if I want a matrix with all zeros, I can use the method called np.zeros. And here I say matrix of 3 by 2 all zeros, or if I use ones, it's going to be a 3 by 2 matrix with all ones. I can use np.identity and three, you just need one dimension here. So it's gonna be a three by three identity matrix. If I want to create random numbers, then I can use the command np.random. And then there are two types of random numbers. One is rand, one is normal, which we have both of these guys also in MATLAB. This is in MATLAB rand, this is rand n. Here we call them random.rand and random.normal. And what are these going to do? So here I'm creating a matrix three by two where all of the numbers are rand and these random numbers are in the range zero to one, bigger than equal zero less than one. And they all come from a uniform distribution, meaning that uh, basically all of the numbers in the range zero to one have an equal chance of showing up as one of the numbers here. Okay. So the chance that I see 0.5 is the same as 0.4, the same as 0 0.3, 0 0.25, and so on and so forth. They all have an equal chance of showing up in the command. On the other hand, what I can do is I can bring these numbers, random numbers, from a normal distribution. And here, the numbers that are closer to the average mu, they have a higher frequency, higher chance of showing up. And here my average is a zero and then my standard deviation sigma is 0.1. So the numbers are literally from plus minus three sigma added to the average, which is zero. So my numbers are roughly between negative 0.3 and 0.3 all. And the closer they are to zero, the more I have the chance for them to show up. And as the third argument, I pass a matrix or a vector here, basically an, an argument saying size equals three and two. So I want a three by two uh, vector of a matrix of uh, random numbers, but they are coming from a normal distribution. I can also create diagonal uh, matrices. And here I only pass the diagonal numbers. So I say create a diagonal and this is three by three, not three by two. Sometimes you copy and paste some code and you get some of these errors, like you sometimes see me. <laughs> and here I want to put these diagonals of one, three, and five on the diagonal, right? So let's go ahead and uh, run this code so far. So these are, this is the zero matrix, three by two. This is the ones matrix, three by two. This is the identity matrix, three by three. These are the random numbers, three by two, which as you can see, all of the numbers are between zero and one. Here are the normal distribution numbers. As you can see, they are all between negative 0.3 and 0.3 almost. 
and the number is closer to zero, you can see that there is more of them. So here I have four numbers with magnitude of about or less than 0.05, while the numbers bigger than 0.1 they have smaller chance and the numbers closer to 0.3 or negative 0.3 are much much more uh, uh, small chance much smaller chances so i need to create a lot more random numbers to see some of those and this is the diagonal matrix with diagonal elements of 1 3 and 5 so these are some commands to create special matrices now let's look at some basic operations so here I showed you the vectors array or arrays uh, one and two. And then, as you can see, one of the things you can do is to sort an array. And here I'm sorting my array number two in an ascending order, which is uh, what uh, the command np.sort does. And this is the result, right? So I'm applying sort command on this. And this is the result, as you can see, from the smallest to the largest. And then uh, the other thing I can do is to sort it in a, a descending order, which there is no such command in Python to go for a descending order. So the way to go about it, if you want to uh, order it in a descending order, is to get this ascending order sorted and then reverse the vector, which is done using this uh, technique here. So if you pass any vector, it doesn't matter what vector, as long as you pass to the vector and then inside bracket, you say column, column, negative one, that means reverse the whole vector. And by the way, here to make it more interesting for you, because here the descending order is the same as the vector itself. Let me go ahead and change the place of this zero and one. So uh, the vector is not sorted in any way in the beginning, right? That might be more interesting. So here is the vector in the beginning, as you can see. And this is the sort in ascending order. And here I'm reversing this guy using, as I said, this kind of trick, really. <laughs> okay, which is here. So I'm reversing that uh, sorted ascending order vector. And now it's descending order. Okay, so just letting you know that this is as far as I could find really in uh, different books and websites and so on. This is about to sort the descending is they use this trick. If I want to get some of the numbers, I use dot sum. I use dot product to get the product of the numbers. I use dot mean to get the average of the numbers in something. I can use dot arg dot mean and dot max to get the maximum and minimum numbers, and I can use dot arg mean and dot arg max to get the location of where the maximum and minimum are happening, and then arg where. Uh, before I go to arg where, let me explain the rest of it here. So uh, here, this is some of the entries in array one, right? Sum two, three, and four, you get nine. Minimum of numbers in 0, 1, and negative 5 is, of course, negative 5. If you pass uh, the max, you would get 1, which, but here we didn't. And then argmin is where, which entry is the minimum. Clearly, which entry is the minimum? Entry number, index number 2. And you can see that, entry 3 or index 2. And that's what you can see here. And then here is the product of the numbers 2, 3, and 4, which is 24. Here is the average of the numbers 0 and 1 and negative 5, which is negative 4 over 3, which is negative 1.33. We can use the dot product. So it's np dot of array 1 and array 2. If you dot product between them, it's 2 times 0, 3 times 1, 4 times negative 5, which is going to be negative 17. I can also use np cross if I want cross product between two vectors. And finally, this is a beautiful one. It's called NPArg where. I'm asking, hey, where in array number two, any number is bigger than three? Find me where in array two, any number is bigger than three and bring the location of that. And you can see here, it says nowhere. In this guy here, in this array number two, no number is bigger than three. Therefore, the result is an empty matrix. Okay, and you know, in MATLAB, instead of this guy, we use which command? We use find, right? In MATLAB, we use find here, we use argware. But the rest of them are very similar. Min, max, 
In MATLAB, the commands min and max would also return to you the location of min and max. So in MATLAB, min and argmin are combined into the min command. Max and rmax are combined into the max command. But here in Python, they are different commands. Just keep you just keep that in mind, okay? So uh, this is argware equivalent to the find command in MATLAB. So uh, here are uh, some basic operations: sorting all sorts of statistics finding uh, min, max, dot product, cross product, and so on on a vector. Now, remember this guy that had an extra dimension of one. It was one by one by four. Can I get rid of that extra dimension of one? The answer is yes. So let me show you that. Here on the original one, I use the command shape, the method shape, dot shape. So it gives me that, hey, the dimension of the original one is 1 by 1 by 4. But then I run the command called squeeze. So I pass it to the squeeze. So a squeeze will get rid of that dimension of 1. And now the shape of the result should be only what? Look, 4. So actually it gets rid of both of these dimensions. <laughs> That's the interesting part it does. If you say, what is this guy itself? What is this np squeeze dot with test? Let me also show you that one. Right? And here says um, squeezed wick tests, right? So let me show you that one as well. So here, you see, this is the same as that original vector, right? Which you had this weight test with uh, uh, three dimensions. This one, all of those dimensions ones are removed, okay? But you see the result is the exact same thing. Okay, now let's look at matrices. Let's do something on the matrices because so far we have been doing all vector algebra. Let's look at the matrices. So here I have those two two by two matrices, math two and math three, if you remember. And since the sizes are the same, I can do addition and subtraction by plus and minus. No worries. But if I want to do the product, the matrix product between them, I cannot use the asterisk. And the fact is, when I do that, it's not going to give me an error. It is going to give me a two by two matrix, but that result is not the matrix product. It is an element-wise, element-by-element product. And uh, initially, I wanted to uh, show you that and say what's happening here. But I decided to just show you the result and uh, not waste the time on that. So here, this just keep in mind, this is not the matrix product. If you want to do matrix product, you have to either use NP dot between mat 2 and mat 3 and yes, we did dot for vectors, but if you do it for matrices, it is actual matrix product. Another way that you can do it with a NumPy is to do mat2 at sign mat3. That is also doing matrix product. Okay, and that is very interesting. Let me uh, run this and let me uh, show you the result here. Right, so if you come here, this is mat2 and mat3. This is the addition, which clearly see element by element added, right? 1 to 1 and 0 added is 5, 5 and 5 added is 10, and so on and so forth. And here I can check, let's say, one of these elements to see if the matrix product is correct or not. So here I'm uh, for element 1, I need 1, 1. I need to dot product row 1 with column 1. So it's 1, 5, and 0, and negative 2, which is going to be 1 times 0, 5 times negative 2, which is what? Negative 10. So this is an actual matrix product. And as I said, if I use at sign instead of these, if I use the at sign between math 2 and math 3, the result is not going to be any different. Look at this. Matrix, keep it in mind, negative 10, 40, negative 6, and 61. And look, when I do add sign, the result is going to stay the same. You can see that here, right? If you look, this is the exact same thing, right? So the result is the same. But on the other hand, if I use the regular asterisk, it is going to give me a 2 by 2 matrix, but it is the element by element product, not actual matrix product. So take a look here. 
Now look, this guy is clearly different. And if you look at this zero, that is the product of element one by element one. One, 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 which is one times zero is zero. Then the next one is five times five, which is 25. The next one is eight times negative two, which is negative 16. And of course, seven times three, which is what, 20. One. So be careful, this is not matrix product, this is element-wise product, and it can easily trick you. That's one of the things in algebra. The other things we can do is, uh, if you want to apply the max and min commands, remember when you do it on a vector, no worries. When you do it on a matrix, there are two ways you can do it is... If you pass an argument of zero as the second argument, or if you pass a value of one as the second argument, you're gonna get different numbers, so uh, or different results. If you do zero, means go to columns and get the max of each column and give me the result. If you'd say one, then it goes to each row and gets the max and it gives you the result. So here, remember your math one is what? Your math one is basically uh, this guy here. Let me show you. Your math one is this. So if I do column wise, it goes between one and six. So it gives you six, goes between negative two and negative four, that's negative two, and between three and five is five. And that is what you can see over here. And then if you go row wise, it goes the maximum in this row, which is three, and the maximum in this row, which is six, and it gives you three and six, right? So that is maximum row wise. This is maximum column wise and then you might say well what if i want the max of the entire matrix if i want the max of the entire matrix can i not pass anything to it right can i say no argument no second argument if i do that is that going to be max of entire matrix one well you can always try that right i want you to try it see if it works and this time, look, here it is really giving you 6, which is what? Of course, the max of this entire guy. And if I say min, it should give me negative what? 4. So let's go ahead and this time change it to min and see if it gives me the min of the entire what? The matrix. And if you look at this. Uh, this time here, it is what? Negative 4. So it does work, right? So yes, the answer is yes. Min of the entire matrix. Okay, so these are some of the max min operations on the rows and columns and the entire matrix. What else can we do? We can reshape a matrix. We can flatten a matrix. Flatten is what you call in MATLAB vectorize. And reshape is, of course, reshape. And the major difference in here in MATLAB is it does it row-wise instead of column-wise. So look, here I apply a reshape and I convert MAT1, which is 2 by 3, as you can see. I convert it to a 3 by 2 by the reshape command. And then I flatten it, which is converted into a line vector. And if you see the results here, let me show you the results. So this is the reshaped version, right? And if I look, compare it against this, what did I do? I grabbed one and negative two from the first row, and then whatever remained in the first row, I added it to the first element on the second row, got my second row here, and then whatever remaining in the second row, it made my third row. So you see, I'm going row by row and do it. And when I flatten, I go first row, then I go second row, as you can see here. Right, so it's a row-wise operation, both of these flatten and reshape, not column-wise as you had in probably MATLAB. So I'm showing you the differences because uh, Python and MATLAB has a lot of similarities, but a lot of differences as well. So I'm just trying once in a while, or maybe a little bit too much to <laughs> mention or emphasize on the differences. If you want to transpose a matrix, there are two ways. You can either use dot capital T or dot transpose. The result is exactly the same, no difference. Look here. This is the result of transpose. This is the result of transpose with uh, what? With a dot T, no difference. The other interesting thing is the trace command, which is some of the diagonal elements. And although this one is supposed to work on diagonal matrices, or not, sorry, the square matrices, but if you run it on a matrix like MAT1, which was two by three, 
it does work. It does not give you error. Look, it, the trace of this matrix is returned as negative 3, although the matrix is not a square. Right? You see? So it is not going to pick on you, hey, why the matrix is not a square? What it does, it adds all the 1, 1, 2, 3, i, i elements together as much as it can find and then stop. So here it added 1, then it added negative 4, and then it went for 3, 3 element, which does not exist, so it stops. So simply added 1 and negative 4, which is what? Negative 3. So this method does not need to work on necessarily square matrices, although it's appropriate to do that, but it's not going to pick on you. You have the determinant for the determinant and for the inverse and for the norm and for the eigenvalue. For all of these, you need a submodule of NumPy called linear algebra, which I mentioned it in the beginning for you. So you import from NumPy the linear algebra and then you rename it as LA. So basically you are saying NumPy.LinAlg is the same as LA. This way, when you want to use the determinant method, instead of saying this, you simply say this. You see, and it makes life a lot easier for you. Compare the length of this against the length of that. This renaming can make your code a lot more what? A lot more efficient and shorter. So, as I said, all of these four um, things, uh, whether it's determinant, inverse, norm, or eigenvalue, eigenvector, you have to use what? You have to use the LA. And here you see I'm applying determinant on matrix 2. And matrix 2, if you remember, is this guy. So determinant is this 1 times this, 1 times 3, minus 5 times 8, which is negative 37. And the interesting part is this number. Look, it's supposed to be negative 37, but it says negative 36.999. And that is because of numerical errors okay so if it's not perfect negative 37 do not be surprised and then here is the inverse of matrix 2 okay which i did get using the inv command and to check that i multiply matrix 2 by its inverse and remember i can do that either by np dot or by at sign and the result should be a 2 by 2 identity matrix and you see it is if it wasn't, then there is definitely something wrong. For a matrix and for a vector, I can use the norm command. And there are different versions of norm. Typically, if you don't use any uh, arguments, the norm is the Euclidean norm for a vector. And you see that here, that's the Euclidean norm of vector array 1, which is basically square all of these, add them together under square root, which is this number. And for matrices, there are lots of different types of matrix norms. I have a video on my channel under engineering mathematics. It's called norms of vectors and matrices. I recommend you watch that video to get a little bit more information about it. And here we are using one norm. Okay. And what is one norm here? So let's look at math one together. And I explain what is the one norm. So this is... The matrix and if you look at one norm the number is eight so what is it that it is doing for you here so what it does is maximum of sum of absolute values column wise so it adds the absolute value of one to six which is seven it adds an absolute value of negative two and negative four which is six and then it adds absolute value of three and five which is eight and then it picks the maximum of those three numbers, which is 7, 6, and 8, which is what? 8. So one norm is what? Maximum sum of absolute values column-wise, okay? Norm of matrix is called one norm of matrix. And again, max sum ABS of uh mat one i and j or i i and j j and this max this sum is column okay so it is something like this if you want to describe it mathematically this is the one norm two norm is separate infinity norm is separate Frobenius norm is separate and 
you can use these different uh, keywords to get each and every one of them. So two is, of course, easy, infinite use, INF, and uh, if we want, I can add them for you here. So if you are interested, I can just mention them for you. So um, the uh, infinity norm is the opposite of one norm. So here you do the maximum sum of absolute values column-wise. In infinity norm, you do it row-wise. You go row by row, add the absolute values, and take the sum, then the maximum of the sums. Uh, second norm is the maximum singular value of the matrix, right? For a square matrix, they are the same as the uh, eigenvalues. For uh, non-square matrices, we have singular values. And uh, then uh, we have what? We have uh, the Frobenius norm, which you add each and every one of the entries squared together. So you square all of the entries, add them together, and then take the square root of the result. That's called Frobenius norm. So if you are interested in knowing more about it, I can add some stuff for you. So you can have 2, which is the default. If you don't even write 2, the result is still going to be the same as 2. So 2 is your default. You can have infinite, and you can have what? You can have Frobenius norm, which you have to write it like this. Okay, uh, so this is about norms of vectors and matrices, and then eigenvalues and eigenvectors, which you can do using the i command, so la.eig, and you pass to it here. I pass to it my diagonal matrix H, which has the entries of 1, 3, and 5 on its diagonal, this guy. And so I know the eigenvalues are those diagonal numbers, 1, 3, and 5. I have a way to check. And here is the result, of course. As you can see, the eigenvalues are 1, 3, and 5. And then these other arrays that it is going to give you are basically, you have this one. You have this one, and then you have this one. And these are the eigenvectors corresponding to 1, 3, and 5, respectively. So here I have eigenvalues, and I have what? Eigenvectors for you, and you can check them as well, right? You can multiply your matrix by one of the eigenvectors, see if the result is equal to the product of the corresponding eigenvalue by that eigenvector, then it means it has done the job right. Uh, uh, I mentioned singular values, and I mentioned uh, that uh, basically inverse. So let me add two things for you. I always, when I come to the end of my video, I always think, hey, is there anything that I mentioned somewhere and I didn't really show them the code? So one is singular values and singular value decompositions, which again, I have a video on that on my channel, which are the generalized eigenvalues for non-square matrices. So if you want to do singular value decomposition, in general, the format is something like this. You pass to it the matrix, and it gives you the left and the right matrices and the matrices of the uh, basically orthonormal matrices, and then it gives you the uh, basically the uh, quasi or semi-diagonal matrix. So this looks like a diagonal matrix. It's not really because it's a um, rectangular matrix, but it, it, is, it has only uh, non-zero values on its uh, ii elements and everywhere else is zero, right? So uh, if you want explanation on that, please refer to my channel. So here I can pass to it mat1, which remember it was a two by three matrix, and I ask it to consider the entire matrix, or I can just skip this because this is the default, right? And so I get these three outputs, and then for the sake of uh, explanation, I will show you the print of S, right? So I say um, matrix of singular values for mat one is, and then I say S. Yes. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at the singular values of matrix 1 here. And if you can see, these are the two singular values that that guy has. Okay, so it's 9.39 and 1.65. 
three and uh, you always have the number here is the minimum of rows and columns. So you have three rows, uh, three columns and two rows. So you only have two eigenvalues in here. If you want, I can show you the left and the right matrices as well, right? There is no worries. So I can go ahead and say um, left orthonormal matrix of singular value decomposition for mat one is u right and then i can add some similar things for vh and this guy is going to be the right orthonormal matrix and i can show you those matrices as well right so you can see them right then your uh, u is your um, two by two matrix as you can see and your V is going to be this three by three matrix. This is row one, row two, and row three. Okay, so this guy is two by two, this is two by three, and this is three by three. And the result of the product of these three is going to be mat one. So your mat one can be written as U times S times VH transpose. Okay, something like this. And this is called singular value decomposition, if you are interested. The other thing that I mentioned is uh, inverse of a matrix. You know, inverse only works for um, square matrices. So we have something in linear algebra, which we call it pseudo inverse or pen uh, rose uh, more pseudo inverse. Okay, and that is a matrix that when you multiply it by a uh, uh, square matrix, but a rectangular matrix, the result is going to be identity. So here, this mat1 times mat1 plus, which is pseudo inverse, should be an identity matrix. If that is the case, we call this mat1 plus, we call it the right pseudo inverse. If the matrix is like this times mat1 equals an identity matrix. This matrix, we call it what? We call it the left pseudo inverse of the matrix. Again, I have a video called pseudo inverse of a matrix for rectangular matrices. And that is on my channel. But if you want to do it in Python, let me show you that one as well so that my lecture is complete. Okay, so the command is from the linear algebra again, and it's pinv. And uh, from these two pseudo inverses, which one is it? It is really the right one. So it is going to cover this case here, not this left one. So if I want to say exactly which one, I have to say this is the right pseudo inverse of the matrix. And this is the one that you use in a system of linear equations that is not a square. So, and here we can check it by multiplying matrix by matrix one by this right pseudo inverse and see whether we get an identity matrix or not. And by the way, here, since I renamed my NP lin alge to LA, I can reduce my code and convert this to only what? To LA so that my code is uh, basically looks nicer and here that is also would call la that is going to make my code a lot nicer so let's go ahead and run this for you and you can see this is the uh, right pseudo inverse my matrix remember was two by three the right pseudo inverse is three by two and the result of product is a two by two if you look at this two by two this element is one this element is literally zero, as you can see, it's 10 to the negative 17. This one is also zero, and this one is one. They are not perfect because there is some numerical truncations and so on, but you clearly can see that. That is the idea of right pseudo inverse as I have, and this is the singular value. So here I just added them for you because I really want you to have 
a uh, good understanding of uh, everything that you might need in your linear algebra. So hopefully it was useful to you. I will see you in my next video. Thank you.